Finally, let's solve a system of equations by the elimination method. I'm fairly fond of this method. It's, it's kind of funny because really substitution is probably the method that is used um, most commonly in the sciences. Um, what's required of the elimination method is that you get the equations in standard form. Standard form means that the variables are on one side of the equation and the constants are on the other side of the equation. And I would typically also say to you that you should line the variables up in alphabetical order. Since we're working with two letters, put the x's in the first column and the y's in the second column. They must be, they must be lined up in order, in order to successfully use this process. What it really amounts to is that you take this statement, which is equal to this number 11, and you take this statement, which is equal to the number 7, and you vertically add these um, equal portions to one another so that you can eliminate one of the variables. It's called the elimination method. This one is set up so that if we did add this and then this, that the plus y and the minus y would add to be 0. But this 1x and this 1x would add to be 2x. Again, those cancel out. I don't ever put a 0 there or write anything down. And 11 and 7 adds to be 18. And when I divide both sides by 2 now, I find out that my solution for x is 9. What I'll do then is similar to the last type of um, solution method, and that is to take this solution for x and substitute it into one of these two equations. I'm going to go with this one because it's got a plus sign. So I'm going to go with the x plus y equals 11, and I'm going to substitute in a 9 for x. We found out x was equal to 9. So I'm putting in the 9, and I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides and find out that y is equal to 2. So again, my solution set is x is 9, y is 2. Take that back into the original set of equations and make sure it checks. It's pretty easy to check this one. Matter of fact, both of them are pretty easy. I'm going to get rid of these ones so you don't have to look at them. There's the two original equations. If x is 9 and y is 2, does 9 plus 2 add be 11? And it does. If x is 9 and y is 2, is 9 minus 2 equal to 7? And it is. Um, so, you know, writing that check down versus checking it visually for yourself, I'm going to say that it's up to you. It's good to be in a pattern habit and to write that check down, but this one's such a simple problem, the check was not too big of a deal. Let's do another one. Just, um, it's got a little bit more to it, not, not much. Um, I'm going to use A's and B's just so that you can know that algebra is not all about X's and Y's. And just to really reinforce this method of, of solution, I picked another problem where the first variables, the 4a and the negative 4a, are going to add together to be 0. So the system of equations is already in standard form. The a's are here, the b's are here, the constants are on the right. You have to make that happen if that's not the case. And then I'm going to add these to get 0, and 3b and 1b is 4b, and 7 and 5 adds to be 12, and you divide both sides by 4, and you find out that b is equal to 3. Once you know that, you plug it into either this equation or this equation. Oh, I'm just going to go ahead and take this equation. So I'm going to take this negative 4a plus b is equal to 5, and I just found out that my value for b is 3, and I have to solve for the letter a now, so I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides, and I have a negative 4a equals 2, and then when I divide both sides by a negative 4, be very careful, I find out that a is equal to a negative 1 half. Um, you would write that in terms of an ordered pair, in alphabetical order. So a is a negative one-half, and b is equal to three in terms of writing that in that ordered pair. And then finally, let's go ahead and check this one because it's got a fraction. So I'm going to take away all my work. And I'll start with the first equation. So four times a plus three times b equals seven. Um, with a being equal to a negative one-half, 
and b being equal to 3. So 4 times a negative 1 half is a negative 2 plus 9. And I want to know if that's equal to 7. And it is. It is equal to a positive 7. When I take my second equation, it's a negative 4 times a, which is a negative 1 half. That's going to be a positive 2 plus b, oops, which is 3. And I want to know if that's equal to 5. So again, this negative times a negative is a positive, And 4 over 2 is 2. And I want you to ask yourself if 2 plus 3 does indeed equal 5. And if so, you can say that I know this is a correct solution for this system because I checked it in both equations. You must check it in both equations to be sure that it's a good solution. I'm going to stop and uh, give you a few more examples in the next set.